So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Brave Thinking Institute Health and Wellbeing Division YouTube channel, where we are going to be talking about emotional eating with an incredible world-renowned expert, Trisha Nelson. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I'm super thrilled to have you. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. Yeah. So as the founder and director of our Brave Thinking Institute Health and Wellbeing Division, this is a really big topic. So many clients come to me saying, I don't know why I keep turning to certain comfort foods or sugar or junk food in ways that I know isn't serving me. I know my body feels really icky and gross when I do that. And I know what I'd like to be feeding and fueling my body with, but there's just this self-saboteur inside of me. And so it's not about really what we're eating. And I know you and I fully agree. It's about really coming into a sense of peace and this beautiful, loving relationship with our bodies and our body temples, treating our bodies like a cherished loved one. And so I'm really, really thrilled to dive into this and really give our listeners and our viewers at least three tangible tools that they can walk away from today, that when they find this behavior rearing its head up, wanting to override their better judgment or their higher self, they can turn to these tools to begin to see a shift. Trisha Nelson is an emotional eating expert and a TEDx speaker, and your TEDx talk has garnered over a million views on YouTube, which is rock star status. That's incredible. Thank Clearly, you. This is a topic that resonates with people. You are yeah. the best selling author of the book, Heal Your Hunger Seven Simple Steps to End Emotional Eating Now. You are the host of the popular podcast, The Heal Your Hunger Show. You've spent over 30 years, which you look 30, so I'm not sure how that. <laughs> works, but you you spend, <laughs> spend over 30 years researching the hidden causes of the addictive personality. And you've been featured on NBC, CBS, KTLA, Fox, Discovery Health, and many more. And you yourself released 50 pounds by not by dieting more, right? But by truly identifying and healing your and the underlying causes of your own emotional eating, which I think is really important. You walk your talk, you've lived this journey, you know what it feels like to live with the pain of the addictive personality. And I imagine you turned your mess into your message. Tell me about your journey. Tell me, you know, a little bit about your own emotional eating and really what led you to create this beautiful community that you have, write your books and do all the things that you do. Yes. Yeah, no, it's definitely started with a mess. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think as far back as I can remember, I was, I was hooked on food. I was obsessed with food. I love to eat. I love to cook. I love to prepare it for other people go out to eat. You know, it was just a big highlight for me and, you know, nothing wrong with that, except that I gained weight really easily. So by age, uh, 21, I was 50 pounds overweight. And I think it was the inner life that really was so hard for me. I mean, I, I looked okay. I was overweight, but I, I was more how I felt about myself. So I really, I had a lot of self-hatred. I had a lot of shame. I had a lot of, um, insecurity, not, not only about how I looked, but just period, you know, in my life, it was, it was hard. And I, I certainly had, um, I had my beautiful spirit, my ebullience and my, you know, excitement about life and doing things, but I, I felt like I lived a double life because I had this shame around my food behaviors and my binges. And I was definitely a binge eater, um, sugar addict, you know, I mean, I would, I'd sit down at, at the TV with some ice cream and some cookies and chips. Cause you have to have salty with the sweet. And so, um, and, and, and I would go overboard, like I'd plan on just having a little bit of here and there, a little, this little of that, but I would definitely go overboard and end up feeling stuffed and sick and so mad at myself. Like what, like, what was that? What, what happened there? you know, and then I'd wake up the next day and feel bad. So, so that was a pretty common pattern for me. And, you know, my efforts at losing weight were really 
uh, really hard. Like I, I would, I was one of those people you would call yo-yo dieters. So I would lose weight and then gain it right back. Like I was really up and down the scale and I had like five different sizes of pants in my closet. Cause I never knew what size I'd be. And, you know, just a lot of just secretive and kind of shameful behaviors around food that I, you know, didn't portray necessarily out in the world, but just, uh, in my, in my TEDx talk, I talk about, um, you know, at the end of a binge, when I couldn't eat any more, I would throw the remains out. And then later when I had more room in my tummy, I would go back and get those cookies that I knew were in there still. And I would get them out of the garbage. And I just thought, oh my God, like who does this? This is so awful. Like I, of course I thought I was the only person in the world. And now that I have the YouTube video out, there's like all these comments, like, oh my God, I've done that too. I'm like, wow. You know? So, so that's the truth is we all think we're the only ones who have done this. And then we beat ourselves up and, you know, and then it of course perpetuates the whole cycle. So, so that was my life, you know, and it, and it, I, I really Honestly, Jennifer, I thought this was going to be the rest of my life. Like I had tried a lot of diets. I'd done a lot of different things. And so I thought, wow, you know, I may be one of those people who just can't get it. Like, I just can't get it. This is going to be my life. Um, but I was very blessed to meet. Actually, it was when I said, I can't do the diet thing anymore. Like I was like, forget that. I can't do that anymore, which was a turning point for me because what happened was, you know, I, you know, my prayer was heard and, and I, and answered, and I met somebody who showed me how to really go deeper and deal with the underlying causes. Like, why was I so compelled to eat and overeat and, and obsess about food? And so I I took that deeper journey um, of healing on an emotional level and also a deeper journey of self-care Um, and so that's really when things turned around is when I started to really get on my own side, like get on my own side, you know, instead of fighting myself, become an ally and start to really heal and, and take care of myself. And, and that, that was my journey. And and then I started helping other people from that point. And that wasn't my my early twenties and I'm in my mid fifties now. So, um, so it's been, and it's been great, you know, it's just been a beautiful journey. It's what I'm passionate about. I I just like, there's nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing than helping people heal their relationship with food. Cause I know from, you know, the depths of my soul, how painful and lonely it can be to struggle and feel like nobody understands. Mm, That's amazing. That's amazing. And I imagine there's so much freedom that you feel now that is really not attached to the size that you are. I know you and I both agree that health comes in every size. We're simply really just talking about if you know, and you know, this is you, we all have a truth meter that your relationship with food feels dysfunctional and you wake up feeling sick and gross or Like, you know, I mean, we know when we've woken up in the morning and we didn't take great care of our body the night before, maybe we stayed up all night or we didn't drink enough water, or we know what we feel like when we are, when jet lagged, or we've really not done a great job, right. Taking care of our bodies. That's what we're talking about is patterns, right. Habitual patterns and ways of being with ourselves, where we just know this isn't, this isn't for me. And it's not an outside in pressure you know, like a pressure that we should not eat this, or we should eat that, or we should look a certain way or be a certain size or shape. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this deeper inner knowing Yeah, on our path. Well, absolutely. And so much of the time it's a, you know, it's a, a feeling of being out of sync because we do know better. Like we're like, but I know I hear so many times from people like, wow, who are health coaches or coaches or leaders, you know, influencers. <laughs> and it's this secret life of theirs. And they're like, but I know better. Like I know this stuff. Like I've read the books. I've taken all the courses, you know? And so that's, that I think even deepens the sense of despair when you have all this knowledge and good stuff in your head, you know, it's not like crazy, you know, diets. It's, it's like good diets, like good ways of eating diet. Diet is a big word for a lot of different things, but, 
but, and yet you're eating in a way that's not self-caring. It's not self-loving. It's self-abusive. And you're like, there's, this is so strange that I know so much. And yet it doesn't, it doesn't show up in what I do. And so that's really, that's a whole nother level of despair, you know, and, and it absolutely has nothing to do with what our size is, but, but what, like we're out of alignment, we're just yes. out of alignment and we crave being in alignment. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that I love that you've created is this quiz that, um, we will have the link below this video. Good. So people can go and take the quiz where you can self-identify, you know, because there are, there's a range right? There's a behavioral range. Tell us, how do you know if you're having an addictive behavior with food? What would be some of the signs and signals? Well, yeah. And I want to address that. And the reason why I use the word, the term emotional eating, and I really like that term. I mean, I was definitely a food addict, so I, I fall into that category. And that's kind of the high, the scoring high end of my quiz is food addiction. Mm-hmm. These are just words, of course. And, you know, if there's no real term that adequately, you know, really uh, addresses any of it, I think, or represents any of it. But I like the term emotional eating because my experience is even if you're under eating or you're super restrictive and controlling around food, which sounds more like where you were coming from, you know, whatever we're doing with food, it's, you know, when it's, when it's dysfunctional, like you said, it's coming from an emotional place. Mm-hmm. Like it's, to me, it's emotional eating, under eating, overeating. It doesn't matter. It's, it's emotionally driven. Like I'm trying to get somewhere. Like there's some hole in my soul, you know, that I'm, that I'm somehow trying to satisfy with this aberrant way of eating. And, you know, and that's gotta be addressed. Like no diet's ever going to fix that because it comes from a deeper place and it comes from that hole in my soul. And so that's why like the term emotional eating, people think emotional eating is like, oh, somebody breaks up with you and you have Ben and Jerry's, you know, shoveling it in your mouth, but that's no, it's like so much bigger. It, it's really that, you know, I, I'm eating beyond my n- nutritional need. Like it's got nothing with what my body, nothing to do with what my body needs. It's like this deeper emotional need that food, of course, will not, ne- no food or food behavior will ever satisfy. So that's yeah. why I like that term. Now the quiz is good because, you know, it's a quick quiz. It's t- maybe three minutes, I'd say to take the free quiz, but what it does do is it identifies some different behaviors around food, which aren't always overeating behaviors. I mean, part of it's, for me, part of the hell of my own food behaviors had to do with what was between my ears, Mm -hmm. you know, like the obsession, like I couldn't stop thinking about food and, and, and it was, I mean, I, I had no space for anything else or anyone else. And I just kept, you know, I'd be with people I love, but I wouldn't be with them you know, I'd be thinking about when I'm not with them, what I'm going to eat. And it, I, I felt so much sadness and guilt that I couldn't be more present with people because I was either thinking about food or I was thinking about, you know, exercise, getting rid of the food. I mean, whatever it was. So mm-hmm. the questions will, you know, help somebody determine where they are on the spectrum. And the spectrum to me is, I mean, I feel like we all have a tendency to be emotional eaters. Like we can all be, you know, like anybody can go overboard. And so the spectrum, I think um, that this quiz will determine where you are on the spectrum, but the spectrum is qualified by two primary things. One Mm -hmm. is the level of control someone has. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if you go on a cruise and you're like, well, I paid for everything. I might as well eat, you know, and you eat lots of (laughs) cheese and crackers and dessert and wine. And, you know, you come home, you're, you're not feeling so good in your jeans And then you're like, okay, like, let's pull out the stops. Let's jog extra. Let's, you know, whatever. Five pounds comes off like that. Um, And so that's somebody who can course correct easily, you know, and, um, and that's on the low end of the spectrum. They might, you know, might have some incidences here and there, but it's not a big deal, you know, but a lot of control and, and very few consequences. So those are the two C words like control and consequences. Whereas on the high end of the spectrum, which is where I was with more addictive eating, um, is somebody with very little control. Like they can't course correct once they kind of blow it, let's say on their clean eating path. Um, you know, it takes a long time to get back on it. 
you know, so that's somebody who can't so easily course correct um, and does have mounting consequences over time, you know, whether they're going up and down the scale, which takes its own toll, you know, on your body or, you know, just a lot of complications health wise over the years, you know, the longer our bodies, we put our bodies through this, the more our bodies talk back to us, you know, and diabetes and heart disease and all these different things. So, so the control and consequences is kind of a good marker for where you might end up on that spectrum. And so just taking the quiz will give you that score. And then based on that, you know, we can go forward with what the, the best steps are for you. Um, to really begin to heal your relationship with food, which is really what I'm about is like, we want it to be a peaceful relationship. And the thing is, it is a relationship. Like we have it our entire lives. You have to eat, you know, you have to eat and we, we got to figure it out. Like we have to figure this out. And it's a total journey. You know, it it's a lifelong journey and for all of us, for me too. Like it's still, a, it's a journey for me in, in healing and and really learning how to work with my body and listen to my body. And I know you've been on that journey too. So it's a, but it's a good journey when we get off the diet track and when we start really taking that deeper look at, at how to actually heal. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, I'd like to um, have you describe a day in the life of an emotional eater and really what that looks like and what it feels like. And then fast forward to a day in the life of someone who's much more of an intuitive eater and has some parameters around that and what course correcting looks like from somebody who used to not be able to course correct. Since I was a binge eater, a lot of my binges would, I mean, I didn't binge every night, but a lot of my binges were at night, you know, when everybody else has gone to bed and I can kind of eat the way I really want to eat. Um, and so waking up, and remembering what I had eaten the night before was one of the most horrifying moments mm -hmm. um, because you wake up kind of like, oh, it's like you don't, you're, you're not thinking yet, right? And then you sort of engage your brain and you actually play back what happened. And I just hated that feeling of like, oh my God, like I did that. Like I did, I just packed in 2000 calories and I went to sleep on it, you know? And so that was sort of a, just a bad way to wake up, you know, and remember, and then would start the, well, I won't eat breakfast. Like let's compensate for what we ate the night before by some, you know, not starving, but definitely skipping meals. I won't eat breakfast or I won't eat breakfast and lunch, you know, and maybe I can compensate that way. Um, I'm going to exercise today. Um, but I wasn't, you know, we come in all different shapes and sizes. I wasn't always good at doing what I planned to do. And I would get hungry. Like I'd stretch my stomach from a big binge. And then I was hungry by lunchtime and would eat, you know, and it just didn't go as planned because I also, sometimes I had ended up eating things that were really yummy that I had a memory of. I'm like, oh, now that I have room in my tummy, I want more of that, you know? And I'd be thinking, I, I, I gotta go get me some of that, you know? <laughs> and so that would be on my mind. And before I knew it, I was slipping into that, you know, mode. Um, I really wasn't good at starving myself. Like I was not good at starving myself. I wasn't a bulim, like a exercise bulimic where I would jog five miles. Like I forget it. <laughs> like when I felt sick, like- that's it. I wasn't going to do anything that healthy for myself. Um, yeah. so, but, but it was sort of chaotic, right? So it's like, you know, I'm going, I'm meanwhile, I'm working, like I'm going to my job, like I'm acting like a normal person, you know, I'm, I'm wearing some pants obviously that allow for the bloat that I have. Um, you know, but I'm also really unhappy with myself. Like I'm really berating myself for what I did you know, and then, but I'm trying to act happy and like life is good. Um, you know, but I have this inner conversation with myself that nobody can see or hear, you know, but it's, it's weighing me down, you know, it's weighing me down. It's, it's, I'm feeling disappointed in myself. I've got this terrible rant. Like you're such a loser. What's wrong with you? Why can't you get it together? you know, you said you were going to starve all day and you're already like going into the break room looking for some muffins, 
you know, and so it's really this double life. And so that was, that was it. And, you know, whether I do it again, the, 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 that night, um, who knows, but it definitely, the rant didn't help the self-critical mm -hmm. rant doesn't help me just, you know, when I'm trying to be peaceful, because all I'm doing is setting myself up to beat myself up some more. And, and so, you know, the food kept me, honestly, the food and the binges and the, the whole conversation in my head really kept me distracted. Mm -hmm. I have to say from what was really going on, you yeah. know, so there's that life of the whole, the life of being an emotional eater, but then there's the purpose that that life was serving. And so the truth is that when I was obsessed with food and then of course, pouring through what diet I can go on because my house is on fire. Like, it's like, let's put this fire out right away. What, what can I do? There's that desperation of, oh my God, I've gained five pounds and I don't fit in my jeans anymore. What can I do? Or I'm losing control again. What can, like what quickly there's gotta be some diet that I can grab a hold of. But in my experience, you know, we, we know what food does to us, but we don't think about what it does for us. And all this noise around food and diet and weight and self-flagellation, all of it honestly kept me, um, for one thing, it kept me distracted from the emotional pain I had. Like the last thing I wanted to do is be with myself. And, and really when I say be with myself, it's really be with my feelings. Mm -hmm. like the for real sure. feelings. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so all that, the running around trying to fix the symptom of the problem would keep me distracted from my feelings. So I call it, I call it pep, the pep test. So I used food as a painkiller. Like it would keep me out of like, numbed the, out. yeah, mm -hmm. totally numbed out from my pain, mm -hmm. you know, and there's all kinds of pain in the world. Like, like take your pick, but it's, I certainly had childhood, you know, emotional pain, you know, and pain from just life, life will serve up plenty of pain. Um, the PEP, the E in PEP stands for escape. So because my head was so noisy, because I was so self-critical, I ate like the, the TV incident, right? Be, sitting in front of the TV, binge watching and binging um, kept me escaped from my, like I was in flight from my own brain. Like, let's like get away from this nagging, terrible voice in my head. Um, and the last P stands for punishment. So, you know, emotional eaters, overeaters are over feelers, and we tend to feel guilty about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and so I, I, I offer that to people as kind of like, when I say emotional eating, it's like, we all know the idea that there's something underneath, but I really want to sort of get people thinking, how do I even pull that apart. Like, how do I even unpack that? So I say, take the pep test. Like if you're going to the refrigerator several, several times a night, find looking for something like, what is the something it might be a need for a painkiller It night might be a need for an escape. Cause your brain is like attacking you. Mm -hmm. And it might be a need for punishment because there's something that you're feeling bad about. And, and to me, the way I ate was very self-abusive. Like when I ate things that either gave me the ga like gastric distress or, you know, the doctor was like, if you keep eating that, you're going to be diabetic or, you know, like it, it was, it was not for my highest and best good. And so there is an element of punishment in there as well. And so I, I just want to offer the pep test inside of my telling you about my day, because yes, I, perfect. I like people to have that kind of let's dig into this a little bit more. And I feel like that's a little something that somebody can hold on to, to start looking at. Maybe I don't just crave chocolate. Like maybe it's yeah. not about the food. What's yeah, really yeah, yeah. going on? So I let, can I pause you yeah. on what's really going on? Because one of the questions I offer, um, you know, the beautiful souls I support is really just asking the question, what do I need? What am I needing right now? Right. Because yeah. in a, I love the pep test. It's super simple. It's really easy to remember, you know, um, oftentimes there's boredom, right? There's loneliness. Food serves so many roles. It can be yeah. a companion. It can, you know, the other thing I often find too, I noticed when I was, there was a particular time in my life when I found all of a sudden I was craving crunchy, salty chips at night. 
And I finish my, you know, work, it'd be late and I'd be starving for dinner, but like, all I'd really want is just to go grab like some chips and salsa. So when I was able to, here I am eating my chips, I'm downing chips and salsa. Right. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So I'm noticing this behavior now is happening. So what am I feeling? Well, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling overworked. I'm feeling under rested. I'm feeling undernourished. I'm starving because I didn't eat today. So I'm feeling hungry, you know, but you may not feel hungry. You may go, I'm not actually hungry right now for food. I'm hungry for what are we hungry for? Are you hungry yeah. for connection? Are you hungry? For me, it was oftentimes hungry for play and fun. Yeah. Like if you think about the kinds of foods that we crave, I know for me, it often will tie to like crunchy, salty, colorful finger type, you know what I mean? Like all the yeah. comfort foods kind of remind us of childhood in my opinion, right? There's this concept of that. And I think for me at times when I'm craving that it's because I haven't infused enough play and joy and, and, you know, like, I feel like sometimes I force myself to sit in front of my computer and, and I don't get up and do my dance break and some of the things that kind of lighten up my day. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, ah, you yeah. know, I need an outlet. I need an escape. Yeah. It's the middle E in your formula. Yep. So by asking that question and really recognizing that I didn't, it's not even about stopping the behavior in the moment. It's just the self-assessment and the recognition and the awareness is the first key to transformation. It's just even being aware, being awake enough to be aware of what might be happening, to watch and to ask those questions. Our higher self knows the answer if we just are willing to allow ourselves to kind of expand into that self-awareness. Then, you know, it really is, okay, so what do I need? Okay. So if I need, you know, less work, more nourishment, you know, like what's one thing I can do. Okay. So right now I can actually make myself a healthy meal and eat it versus eating this whole bag of chips and salsa and then feeling like, okay, I kind of feel full, but kind of that icky full where I needed more of a balanced meal, you know, like with some protein and vegetables and a combination of not all carbs and salsa. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And so, okay, so I can do that right now. Or I can say, you know what, tomorrow I can install two things. I can install a five minute dance break in the middle of my day. I know I'm going to feel so much different, even if it's just one five minute dance break for myself and forcing myself to be, you know, like handcuffed to my desk for this project that I'm working on, you know, and I can make sure that I feed myself, you know, better. So I don't get to the end of the day. So stressed and tired and starving, you know, so it's the, it's the little things that I think can really, you know, make a big Um, difference. Yeah. And it's not so little though. It's not so little to check in because we are used to being disconnected from our bodies, you know, and to be in our heads and figure it out, you know, and so dropping in and really listening, you know, and just becoming conscious is huge. Now here you are today. And I think what's helpful and what I've heard from a lot of people, and I know you shared this with me in your story is the weight loss was more of a secondary gain. The first step was really just the inner healing and the emotional work that that you did. And then the body finds its homeostasis. The body finds its happy place, you know, that isn't about control. So what is it like today to have a new free, peaceful relationship with food? Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, every day I'm grateful because it was, you know, such a, (laughs) such a mess before. Um, first of all, I love waking up. I'm really happy when I wake up because I didn't abuse myself the night night before. I don't have like a bad memory. Um, when I wake up, I mean, it's definitely been a journey and I am living my best life now. So, um, uh, but food wise, in terms of my relationship with food, it's definitely, uh, peaceful. I, I enjoy, I like to eat three meals and, and really minimize the snacking because it just works for my body. And it's also very self-caring. Like my body knows it's going to get fed again. And I find that, you know, I used to have, because food was such a 
lifesaver for me when I was young, you know, I had stuff, I had trauma when I was a kid and, and, and food was there for me. Like I, you know, when you're young, you don't, you don't, you don't have a lot of tools, you know, you don't have a lot of tools. So food was definitely there for me. And so when it saves your life, so to speak, I mean, I, I, I didn't have any life threatening, but I definitely, you know, didn't know how to get by either. And food was there for me. And I find with people who struggle with food and weight, we have a very deep subconscious belief that food will save our lives. And I don't mean regular food. I mean, excess food, the foods we really want, you know? And so, um, I find that when I feed myself on a regular schedule and it, it's really, I'm reparenting myself, mm -hmm. you know, um, and this kind of goes, it flies in the face a little bit of the, of the, the big, you know, intermittent fasting craze that we live in right now, um, I find that for people who really do have disordered eating or struggle with food and weight chronically, we have this um, this thing inside of our, ourselves that if we go too long without eating, it sort of sends these signals like danger, danger, I'm starving, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, it doesn't, it, it doesn't end well because if I f have that panic yeah. And I can still get hangry. I mean, my partner, like he'll see, he's totally not an emotional eater in any way, shape or form. And he's seen me get hangry where I'm like, I have to eat. Like this is enough already. Like dinner needs to be now, you know, <laughs> and I don't get cranky usually, but we've had a few moments, um, you know, but I have this inner thing, which is like, I, I don't do well with starving myself. First of all, it's got bad, you know, there's bad juju around it. You know, if you're a dieter, right. And the, and the deprivation behind it, mm -hmm. but also, and I really believe that I have this inner, I, I have this inner thing where it did save my life at one time. And so there is kind of a body memory and an idea, maybe called it an old idea, but an idea that food, like I'm going to die if I don't eat, you know, like if I don't get fed, I'm going to die. And so I feel like that's why those who do try um, the intermittent fasting, sometimes they binge when their window opens up because yeah. they're in that kind of panicked state of I'm like, I'm going to die if I don't eat, you know, and, and I don't think normal eaters have that as much, you know, mm -hmm. it was really, it's from, it goes way back. Food saved mm -hmm. my life. And yeah. I tell my clients that I'm like, let's, let's pause for a moment and thank food for doing its job when we needed it to like, thank mm -hmm. you food for being my comforter. Thank you for being there for me when I was in so much pain and didn't know what to do and had nobody to talk to. Like it really did a good job. It kept me off the bridge, you know, it kept me off the bridge. So, so I think it's really, and that, that is part of that healing, that relationship. So anyway, back to what I was saying is that I like to eat three meals and really, and to me that's self-caring, it's self-loving, you know, it's good if they can be like nutritious from the ground, you know, vegetables and, and nutrients that feel good and clean. Um, you know, some days are better than others, but, but basically I feel like I'm reparenting myself and feeding my, I'm taking care of my, my little girl, you know, my need to be fed and to know I'm going to get fed and we're not going to do erratic, crazy things with food anymore. Like we're not going to be on that crazy diet roller coaster ride. So that really works for me. It's a piece I'm going for. It's not so much, you know, about some specific diet. It's really about feeling peaceful with food. So I eat three meals. I enjoy my meals. I like to, I'm not big on cooking. My partner is, so we do cook together and then it's fun. So we make cooking fun. You know, I wouldn't really do that on my own, uh, probably, but you know, we live in California, so there's great salads. There's great restaurants with super nice, beautiful foods with all col colors of the rainbow. Um, and so, yeah. And so that's kind of it. And then I just feel well fed. I feel well nourished. Um, you know, I, and I, and I'm hungry when I wake up in the morning, like I'm ready for a healthy breakfast. So, and I, I love that. So it's just, it's just, I probably eat the most normal I've ever eaten. You know, I don't have a lot of restrictions, but I love the word he used earlier, which was parameters. So I am, I mentioned earlier, I'm sugar. I was a sugar addict. 
So I don't really play around with sugar because I know it's highly addictive and there's very few benefits besides that it tastes good. So I use like, I love stevia. I feel like stevia is God's gift to emotional eaters, stevia and monk fruit, <laughs> you know, cause I, I have a sweet tooth. Like I like sweet foods and, and I, you know, I'll have coffee with some yummy, like uh, nut milk, some kind of nut milk and some stevia. And I'm like, you know, it's like a little treat. But I do, I'm, I have a healthy respect for the addictive nature of sugar. Um, and I have some really bad memories of sugar binges. So I'm just, you know, it's, th there are parameters. Like I'm not, it's not a free for all for me because I've had, you know, experiences that were pretty ugly. So I, I have, you know, it, it, it's the trickiest of all addictive habits because you have to eat, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like alcoholism where you can put your, the plug in the jug walk away from it and, you know, don't darken the door of bars. It's not that way. You have to take that tiger out of the cage three times a day and pet the nice kitty and then get it back into the cage without it tearing your ass off. So, <laughs> so there's, you know, it's not like there are some ways to do yeah. that, you know? And, and so I do, you know, I just try to treat my body the best that I can, but I don't freak out over anything either. Like I'm not, not afraid anymore by the grace of God, but I do, I do uh, want to mention it doesn't just happen. Like I do do some really important self-care things so that I'm emotionally balanced. Cause yeah. if I'm not emotionally healthy and then I'm around some really addictive foods, that's a prescription that's not going to work out well. Well, I was going to ask um, you, so let's imagine you're, you're now right. You're invited to this holiday party. Mm -hmm. and there's just the gamut, right? The popcorn and the chips and the pretzels and oh, all, all the candy all, and the yeah. desserts. And, you know, so there's probably, I would imagine a few things you've done that day, week or month, and obviously more than a month, but that sets you up for success. And so for our viewers that are faced with these family and work and holiday experiences, what are some very simple tools they can start working with that will help prevent, you know, the binging and some of the totally. well, I, I mean, I start my day in prayer. So I'm, I'm a big believer that I need help. <laughs> so, so I need help. So I love praying and I, so I pray, you know, um, I don't pray for very long, but I like, I like making a connection. I like getting grounded with spirit. I also meditate twice a day. So I'm kind of a, a transcendental, a very remedial transcendental meditator. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I meditate in the morning for 20 minutes and then I, in the afternoon, I do a meditation and that saves me. Like I really, especially the afternoon one, I feel the benefits of that. Cause when I've been working all day, I've accumulated stress and, you know, conversations that maybe didn't go well, or just, you know, the general life stuff. And so I take a little break and I do another 20 minute meditation and boy, it just sets me. It's basically, it's my coffee and chocolate. You know, so instead of coffee, like that, that afternoon, pick me up. That's what that is, you know, and it totally picks me up and I have more energy. And obviously, you know, most people would think of that as really hard. I've built that habit over time. It is a meditation practice. They call it practice because you got to practice it. Um, but it really helps me be emotionally grounded. It helps me be spiritually grounded. I like to call my morning routine, putting money in my spiritual bank account, you know, that I can take withdrawals from later in the day, because we will get stressed out. Like stress is unavoidable, you know? And so if I, but if I've spent some time in the morning, I might write if I'm jammed up. I mean, sometimes when my head is really busy and I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I start thinking about a business problem or something and I'm like, oh dear, you know, I'll, I'll meditate in the middle of the night or I'll write, I'll write out my feelings. My writing is not, <laughs> it's not prose. It's like F words and <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just dumping it out. Like it, like share it or wear it. So I'm dumping it on paper, which is really my computer, but but I just, I, I'm an emotional being. Like I have emotions. Like I have deep 
feelings. I, it's the way I've always been. It used to get me into trouble. And now it's, it's an asset. If I know how to deal with it, like get, like get the excess of hard feelings out grief out. I mean, I cried today. I boohooed twice today, you know, and I, I lay on the couch and I, it's, but I got to do it because otherwise I'll eat over it. Like I'm not cured. I don't consider myself cured. You know, it's like, I just, I, I'm just emotionally healthier than I used to be because yeah. when I have the feelings, I got to address them, you know, so I can move through them, but they don't last, you know, right. like I feel good now. Right. Yeah. yeah. So waves and grief comes in waves and, yeah. but I honor myself by honoring that I am having feelings, you know, and, and I think our tendency is be like, oh, I shouldn't feel that way. Right. We should on suppress ourselves. It, to suppress yeah. it. Absolutely. We like to say whatever is suppressed will eventually express itself one way or another. Yes. Even empowering way or in a really destructive way. So yeah. I think just to repeat a few of your practices, yeah. first thing in the morning, really praying, you know, and whatever word our viewers would use for that. It's a connection to a higher power. I am not doing this alone. There is a power breathing me, yeah. you know, there is a power and beating my heart and really dropping into gratitude and asking for help, asking yeah. for support from this higher power. Step number yeah. one, Step number two, really cultivating a meditation practice. So you do 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that for anyone that that feels like, oh my God, there's absolutely no way I could do 20 minutes in the morning and the afternoon, five minutes, totally. the five minute rule is nobody can argue that you don't have five minutes. We all spend five minutes too long answering an email on the phone with a colleague Facebook, Maybe social media, <laughs> exactly. So we sacrifice those five minutes, and we just there's so many, yeah. apps, you know, apps, on calm app, yeah, insight timer. You can do a guided meditation, like yes. just it could be a breathing exercise, like something yeah. just like we have to be reminded who we are, like we're spiritual beings, you know, having a human experience. Let's yes. tap in. And I do. It. I have um, a free guided love your body meditation that I'll make sure I put in with your resources as well, your, your quiz and other things. And then, you know, the second thing I hear you saying is really when you feel the emotion rise up, you pause, you journal. So you express it either through journaling, or if you feel like you need to shed some tears, you lay on the couch, cry, you have your moment, and then it's a wave, right? It washes yeah. over you and moves through you. One of my favorite practices is conscious dance. As you know, my transcendence work, you Even just five minutes of turning on a song and just letting my body move through whatever is up for me is super cathartic and so, so, so powerful. And a couple of tools, and I'm sure you probably use these too, that I make sure is I make sure I don't go to a Christmas party starving. Like if oh, I'm yeah. somewhere where I'm not sure what the food's going to be and, um, you know, like I just make sure, even if I just pack an apple and some almonds in my bag that I have something in my stomach ahead of time really helps me not just go to all the snacky stuff you yep. know, and eat all of that because I'm just underfed. So I just yeah. make sure that I'm eating. I'll give you some of my holiday hacks is yeah. what I like to call them. Yeah. First of all, I like to say de food, de holiday. So like, if you're, if like, it's not about the food, it's really about the people. So I try to like, remember, it's not about the food. So I like to de food, de holiday. Um, I really like if I'm some one thing that I do for myself is if I'm at a dinner table and I'm not, I'm choosing to not have dessert and everybody's like eating pie, like at Thanksgiving goes all pie, you know, it's like three, we had three different pies at, at my house, at my mom's house. And so at the moment when everybody's eating pie and they're going, Mm, ah, like there's all these noises people are making, yes. like, I get up and clear, like I start doing dishes or I do something. I don't just sit there and try to be with it, even though it's not hard for me to be with it. I'm like, you know, I could, I could take this time to do something a little more constructive, you know, because part of what gets people is the feeling of deprivation, yeah. like they're missing out. And, and when you're with a bunch of people who are eating sugar, what are you going to do? You're probably going to eat sugar too. 
you know? So I like to be like, okay, this is a good time for me to, you know, serve some water. Like I get into service. I find service to be really useful because I'm, I'm making busy work. Um, so I'm not sitting there th like my thoughts could, could go to, wow, everybody's eating pie, but me. Right. And that's <laughs> The whole pity just like it just drags you down. So yeah. I'll do dishes or I'll get I'll get busy being helpful. And that just takes me right out of my head. So yeah. then I'm just I feel helpful and I feel good. I feel like, well, there's a place for me here, you know? Yes. And so I find yeah. that really helpful. I also um for people who get tripped up when everybody's like, you're not eating pie or you're not like people like to like, they're kind of sl slightly befuddled if you're not partaking. Right. And they might want to conjole you to partake. And so I just say, Nope, I'm good. Like, I'll just say something really simple. Like I don't try to say, Oh no, I don't eat that. Or this is I'm on this you know, plan or, or whatever, like I, no explaining. We, we never, we don't owe explanations, you know, and it just gets us into trouble. Um, and so I like to say, no, I'm good. Or I've had enough, you know, which is true. Point is I don't owe an explanation and I can just say I'm good. Cause I am good. I'm yeah. Good. Like and I, I think say that. That's super important. I, that's definitely been something that's challenging for, you know, some of the clients I've worked with around choosing, and I think it's important to go into that situation pre-deciding and then really making an empowering choice for yourself. But I think what's more important, and I'm sure you feel this way too, Trisha, is that like the feelings around it are more important, I find, than even the food itself. Yeah. Like if I'm eating a salad, but I'm feeling super pissed that I can't have that hamburger and fries and resentful towards the salad, that's worse than eating yeah. hamburger and fries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But eating the hamburger and fries and feeling super filled with guilt and shame and self-hatred because why am I eating this? Like peace is really choosing to eat whatever you're going to eat. Yeah. Then really doing so with love. And doing yeah. so in a place of peace of mind and calm. I do think one beautiful step that our viewers can take is A, to take the quiz, to see where you are. And I imagine post quiz, you probably send some tips and opportunities for yeah. um, our well, viewers. Hand out, handouts and stuff. Yeah. Handouts and think ways to connect with you on this journey. If they are wanting to do a deeper dive, the other thing they can do is download my free, you know, love your body guided meditation, five minutes. It's super easy to do, especially around the holidays, I find that when I install that, I'm just less likely to engage in behavior that I love that. I want to hear that. That sounds yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So those are two really uh, powerful um, gifts. And then what's your, what's your website just so that if they want to just go straight to your website. Yeah. It's heal your hunger.com H E A L heal your hunger and it's heal your hunger.com. And my podcast is the heal your hunger show. Well, Trisha, you are amazing. I take so much courage and bravery to walk the path least traveled to really do the deeper inner work, to recognize where these behaviors are stemming from, to really heal those old you know, hurts and traumas and wounds and begin to fill those empty places. Like you mentioned, you know, no amount of food can ever, or starvation or whatever the behavior is can heal the, the gaping wound, but really doing the deeper work and the love. And then of course, I know, you know, you've really uncovered some very powerful tools that can just help make this path a little bit easier and less painful. <laughs> For others that are along the journey. So thank you for being yeah. you, for being a guide, for being a coach, for uh, paving the way and just being a really loving presence, a safe place to have this conversation. There's a lot of shame and blame and frustration and anger and pain when you are in that cycle. And yeah. so we just, our, our hearts go out to anyone who's listening to this that are in the grips of that cycle and just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and the tunnel's not as long or painful as you might think to travel it Absolutely. we're here for you yeah Feel free to reach out to us and especially trisha to you really i mean this is your area of absolute expertise so i would send anyone that feels they, they might be having you know a real problem or addictive you know 
relationship and they they know that that it's not a outside person saying this is an issue for you but they they know deep down that they'd like to do that inner healing that they they reach out to you and uh, get in touch so absolutely thank you so much for having me it's such a pleasure always to be with you jennifer you have such a beautiful heart 